We were on the border of Thailand and Burma, and there's only two other border towns. One's way north, but this one is the closest one to Bangkok. It's only five hours away from Bangkok. And so this is a major trafficking, child trafficking point. Kids will get kidnapped, street kids will get kidnapped off the streets. They'll break a limb, and then they'll make them beg in front of the local 7-Eleven in Bangkok, and the parents will never see them again. The brothels here, all the prostitution places, they're full of girls, 14, 15. You could go to the border and get offered a girl just like that, 14, 13, 12. I mean, they won't even blink an eye. I mean, not, and not only for child prostitution, but also child slavery. People hear about this, but they don't know what to do. We were the first shelter here, just because of the danger of it. We were the first shelter here. And the way the home even started was we were on the border and they say, she's leaving at 4 o'clock to Bangkok. And I asked her, I said, what is she going to Bangkok for? Because we know the child prostitution. And, and they said, oh, she's going to sell flowers. And we said, we said she's, she's not going to sell flowers. You know, why, why are you sending her to Bangkok? And they said, oh, no money, no money. We have, our family has no money. And I said, well, what would it be to, to, to get her back, to buy her back from the traffickers? And we settled at 800 baht, which is like roughly $24, $27, about that. We got her and we, we didn't know what to do with her because we didn't have a home yet. And so I looked at her and I was like, okay, what are we going to do with this little girl? Just, she told us, she said, we need to get my little sister. We need to get my little sister. And I knew that her sister would be the next one to go for child prostitution. And so she told us, can we go and get my sister? Can we go and get my sister? And so actually we negotiated with the mom and got her little sister too. Burma is right, I mean, it's a stone's throw over the border and right behind us. And so because of that, there's the poverty there, the exploitation, just the desperation. People are just flooding over these borders. And so parents are selling their children left and right. 500 baht, 1,000 baht, a child, $20, $30, and they'll sell their children. It's just getting more and more desperate. Our first year, we got 52 village kids. So we went into the villages and we got the kids that were at risk because of poverty, because of what's going on. And so we got them basically before the bad guys got them. Before we came here, there was no, there was nowhere for these kids to go. Nobody wanted to do it. They were afraid of the police. They were afraid of the government because everyone's in on it. And so we, this big organization told us, there's kids traffic daily here, but we have nowhere to take them. Nobody will do it. Everybody's scared. Our whole vision is to raise up a generation in this nation that will stop all of it, stop the poverty, stop the child slavery, stop the child prostitution, and raise them up to be an army. And that's what we believe for every home that we start, that not only they're safe and they're protected, yes, but it's a whole generation that rises up in this nation and changes it all, changes this nation, stops it, put an, puts an end to it. That Just destroy child prostitution, destroy child slavery just completely annihilated it all and we believe that it won't stop until we raise up these children and these nationals and the, the, the generations to put a stop at it. I know when you see that video you can get a little bit overwhelmed. That's usually people's first response is the problem's so big, what can I possibly do to help? And I'm here to say you can do something. There is something in your hands. We, it's too big for me. It's too big for any one of us alone. But together, we all have something that we can use to fight child trafficking in our generation, to fight child exploitation in our generation. My, the, the thing that I hate the most is to ask uh, for money, to ask for things for the kids. But... I know now at this point it's getting way too big for us. Recently the Thai government has approached us and said there are 60 children trafficked daily on our border. We don't know what to do. Can you please help us? There's something in your hands. It can be a business. It can be a skill set. It can be finances. It can be resources. It can be influence. It can be time. There is something in your hands that you can use to say, here you go. I'm going to join in the fight with you. I'm going to link arms with you. I'm g we're going to do this and we're going to annihilate child trafficking and the exploitation of children in our generation, in our hour, in our time right here and now. Bank 
TikTok right now, we're actually at the location where we rescued a little boy. The next street over is the Red Light District. This part of the ministry, this, this aspect of it is where we actually rescue children out of child prostitution, out of exploitation, out of slave labor. This is actually where the children end up. They get trafficked from our border and it's about six hour drive down to Bangkok, the main city. And a lot of the children are trafficked for prostitution and for slave labor. They have to sell 70 rings of flowers a night. If they don't, they get beaten. Uh, they're blindfolded come and going out to the brothels to sell these flowers and they're blindfolded coming back in. And what this is doing also, this is seasoning them and it prepares the little girls to be sold into the sex trade. They're now safe in one of our uh, transition homes. The process is the Muslim slum that from over on our border, that's actually a pool for traffickers. There's a certain account that the money goes into. They got an initial 1,500 baht, which is 50 US dollars, just as a deposit. And then every month they were supposed to, there was another $50 that was supposed to be deposited into the account of the aunt of the family. Uh, they get, these boys, they get one scoop of rice, they work, they go from nine o'clock at night to three in the morning. It's just slave labor. They're in, they have to go barefoot, they have to beg, they have to be around the brothels, they're around all of the prostitution. And there's a lot of pedophiles that come to Bangkok, so there's a lot of demand for them. It's a very dangerous place once they get here and once they get in that underworld. I'm 15, almost 16 years old. My family came from Burma, and I was born in a refugee camp in Thailand. What had happened was uh, when we were negotiating for their niece in, in the slum area, when we got the eight-year-old girl for $24, uh, I told the mom, if you ever want to talk to her, I'll put her on speakerphone, and here's my cell number. And so I gave my cell number. Well, what happened was when I gave my cell number out loud, this boy memorized my cell phone. He walked around the house saying it over and over and over. And so he would call me every week and say, teacher, can you take me? Teacher, can you take me? I want to study. I, I want to go teacher. They're going to send me a Bangkok. Can you take me? Can you take me? Uh, at that point, we only had a girl safe home. I had nowhere to put him. I had nowhere to take him. And so so I said, just wait, just wait, we'll, we'll, we'll get you home, just wait, just wait. And then the call stopped coming. My mother told me about Bangkok, and I wanted to see stuff there. But I didn't know that they were going to blindfold me. My mom sold my brother and me to traffickers. At that time, I was 11 and my brother was 6. She sold us to the traffickers, and they took us to Bangkok to sell fruit and flowers. When I reached their house, they took the blindfold off me, and I saw two kids, one boy and one girl. We all had to sleep in the same room, and they both had to sell fruit and flowers like me. When I was there, they beat all of us. They tied the girl and beat her a lot. The day that they beat the girl, she couldn't sell up to their quota. So when we came back together, we all sat in a circle, and they tied up the girl. They tied her hands above her head and beat her. They told me, you have to sell up to 1,000 baht a day. But some days I couldn't do it. 
Sometimes I only made 500 to 600 baht a day. If we could not reach our goal, they beat us. They would twist my skin and my stomach. Good job. They use tools made of steel and hit me. My brother is younger and he doesn't know how to sell yet. They would beat my brother in front of me and I couldn't stand to watch it. So I told them, don't beat him. If you want to beat someone, beat me. I didn't cry. I didn't cry when they beat me. But I cried when I got back to the home. I am scared they're going to beat me again. My heart would break when I saw the knife. One night I got a phone call. Um, one of the boys was on the other end saying, they're beating me, they're beating me. He was crying and, and just hysterical on the side. I said, who's beating you? And he said, the traffickers, they're beating me. And I said, where are you? And he said, Bangkok, I'm in Bangkok. I said, where in Bangkok? He said, I don't know. They blindfolded me coming in and blindfolded me going out. I don't know where I am. I said, I'll be on the first plane in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. Meet me at this uh, prominent bus station in Bangkok. And I said, whatever you got to do, get there. We got all our team ready, and we were on the first flight out to Bangkok. I get over to that place, the meeting place. I told them we were combing the area, combing the bus station. And uh, didn't, nobody saw these kids. And just going everywhere that we would know that these kids would be. After hours and hours of searching, uh, we go back to the hotel. We're exhausted. Three hours later, four o'clock in the morning, my phone rings. They said, we ran away, we ran away. I said, do you know where 7-Eleven is? And he said, yes. And I said, run into that 7-Eleven, tell them what's going on, I'll be there. We got taxis, pull up to the 7-Eleven, and the boys were there. They ran out. They were so happy to see us. And um, he said, we have to go and get my brother. I was happy to escape and to have someone to help me, but I worry that they will take my brother to another house and he won't be there anymore. I knew at that point we were going into the traffickers' house, we are going into the slums. This is a whole area, a whole ring, so I knew we had to get the police involved. The police came and caught one of the traffickers at the house I was in, and they rescued us there. The police went, kicked down the door, grabbed the little boy, grabbed the girl. Then Pastor Lana brought me food. That food was fried chicken. Earlier, I felt like a stupid kid. But when I came here, I learned from teachers. They taught me about life and what to do in the future. Before, I didn't know Jesus. But when I came here, they taught me about Jesus and the story of Jesus every day. Today I am very happy, and I have the chance to study. Now I feel like I am safe. I'm glad that I got rescued, and that I'm not with the traffickers anymore. No child should ever feel like that. No child should ever fear for their life. And and that 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 time that that trauma just took from their innocence and their childhood. That that would even be in their memories. It's so inhumane to be able to beat a child like that and use them as your own personal slave for labor and not look and think this child should be playing, this child should be going to school, this child should be eating and just to look at a child and say this is what I can get out of you and not even see their smile or see their soul, just not even look in their eyes and see them. It just breaks my heart. I don't know how anybody could do that. This is the most special outreach that they have, especially to my heart, because this is the promise that the Lord gave me over 13 years ago, probably about 15 years ago, when He said, you will reach more through the children than you'll ever reach alone. 
and uh, he gave me Psalm 127 3 as arrows in the hand of a mighty man so are children of the youth they will not be ashamed but they will subdue conquer the enemy at the gate and the neat thing is this place is called gate 2 which means it's a gate from Burma to Thailand so most trafficking is done here uh, it's just another hub another hub of illegal uh, illegal things coming over and just human trafficking and so I didn't even know the fullness of the promise, but right now, behind my shoulder, this is the fullness of the promise of God that He told me. And He also said that uh, when you change a generation, that generation will change their nation. And so it's neat to see this generation of rescued girls, healed children, them changing this nation, Thailand, but also the nation right over that river where, where there's a huge temple on that side, the nation of Burma. And so it's not just one nation, but they're changing nations from this one spot right here. So I guess this, to me, is just such, this is the emphasis of what we're all about. And, and this encompasses everything right here.